Kemba Walker's injury. What happened? How did it happen? How was it diagnosed? And what happens next? Stay tuned to find out. Hey everybody, Dr. Chris, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine physician. Welcome to my channel, your favorite source for information on broken bones and other things. That's a little doctor joke we like to make around here. So if you're a fan of the NBA and the Boston Celtics, you'll appreciate this video because today we're talking about Kemba Walker and his injury that occurred recently. For those of you who don't know, Kemba Walker is a standout point guard for the Boston Celtics. He was injured on November 2nd, 2019 in a game versus the Denver Nuggets. He was attempting to steal a ball and he was injured when he collided with one of his own teammates. He struck his teammate with the crown of his head on the left hand side. He immediately fell to the ground after the collision. And after a quick assessment on the court, his neck was immobilized in a collar and he was taken off the court on a spine board. In the locker room, he was examined and diagnosed with concussion symptoms, but he was sent to the hospital for further examination. Basically had numbness and tingling in his hands. He never lost consciousness. Basically stayed on the floor, mostly as a medical precaution. He was assessed at a local Denver hospital, but was subsequently released to travel back home to Boston with the team that night. So this leads us to our first question. What happened? So ultimately, Kemba Walker was diagnosed with a cervical sprain. And this is basically just a soft tissue injury of the cervical spine involving the ligaments in between each of the cervical vertebrae. A cervical sprain implies that there was an injury which involves some stretching and or tearing of the ligaments in between vertebrae. Since they elected to treat this injury non-operatively, we can assume that there was no significant instability exhibited between cervical vertebrae. We can also assume that since a decompression procedure was not performed, that whatever inflammation was present was not significant enough to impact the spinal cord in a significant manner. And this just means that although there might have been some swelling that was associated with the injury, it wasn't enough to press on the spinal cord. So this leads us to question number two. How did this happen? So if we look at the slow-mo replay, we can see that Kemba struck his teammate when his neck was flexed and his head was down. This caused Kemba to experience a forced forward flexion of his cervical spine from the crown of his head on the left-hand side. This caused both sudden pain and an immediate collapse to the ground. And judging from the way that he went down, it is quite possible that he suffered a phenomenon called Lermite's phenomenon. This is an uncomfortable electric sensation which travels down the back and into the extremities when the neck is flexed and the head is bent forward. This sensation can be associated with trauma and in particular, compression of the spinal cord at the level of the neck. Basically had numbness and tingling in his hands. And judging by his presentation at the time of injury and his symptoms shortly thereafter, I would assume that this is what he experienced at the time of injury. So question number three, how was this injury diagnosed? Initially, after Kemba Walker was taken to the locker room, the medical staff would have performed a physical examination. And here they're looking for both signs and symptoms of spinal cord injury. These signs and symptoms would include paralysis, loss of motor function, loss of sensory function, abnormal reflexes, abnormal rectal tone, tenderness at the site of injury, and a palpable defect or crepitus at the site of injury. After being transferred to a hospital, a history and a detailed physical examination would be performed by the attending physician at that site. After the physical exam was completed, then he would be sent for x-rays to assess for gross alignment and overall structure. And here they would be looking for dislocations or fractures of the various spinal segments. After the x-ray was completed, he would be sent for a CT scan to assess fine structure, subtle fractures, and the stability of the three columns. Stability of the spinal column has been described using a three column model proposed by Denis. And basically, Denis separated the spine into three columns, the anterior, middle, and posterior column. And all of these three columns need to be intact in order for there to be stability of the spinal column. If the structural integrity of one or more of these columns is lost, then the overall structural stability of the spine has been lost and a surgical stabilization is required. Fortunately, where Kemba is concerned, this was not the case. Finally, after x-rays and a CT were performed, then an MRI would be performed to assess the soft tissues around the spine, and this includes both the ligaments and the intervertebral discs. 
And here they would be looking for damage or tearing to the ligaments in between successive vertebrae and also damage to the intervertebral discs, including herniation of the disc or compression on the spinal cord or nerve roots with disc contents. And information from all of these different imaging modalities would allow them to assess the overall stability of the spine, both from a neurologic point of view and a mechanical point of view. As they elected to treat Kamba non-operatively, we know that he did not suffer any significant instability of his spine and that there was no significant compression on either the spinal cord or on the individual nerve roots. So that leads us into question number four. How exactly did they treat this problem for Kemba? So at this point, they've elected to treat him with a period of rest and activity restriction in order to allow the necessary healing to occur. He would undergo frequent reassessments in order to gauge his recovery and to rule out any further deterioration in his signs or his symptoms. And we could expect all of these processes to continue until he was able to demonstrate his ability to return to play on the basketball court. And this leads us to our final question. What will happen in the future? Well, if all of his symptoms resolve spontaneously, we can expect that Kemba Walker will be able to return to competitive basketball play within a few months. Only time will tell and we'll have to monitor his progress to see what will happen in the future. So there you have it. Today we've been talking about the Kemba Walker injury. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday Just a flesh wound.